Today, let's talk about Moondrop Stellaris. Yes, the newest planar from Moondrop. I've listened to it for the past few days and I finally am ready to give you guys my full thoughts. Let's jump into it. Hey friends, Tim, welcome back to another video on Gears Audio. And today, the planar, $109 Stellaris from Moondrop. Now this one, I'm just gonna rip the bandaid off as quickly as humanly possible. This is not gonna be for everyone. The frequency response that's on the screen right now should tell you pretty much almost all the reasons why this is gonna be a love it or hate it IEM. As you can see, there's quite a few peaks in this IEM. There's one at 2K, there's one at eight, and there's one in the air region as well. What this does, and actually, let's get into the pros of what this does first. Now, the 2K region, the shout region, this one doesn't really do so much. That elevation just distort the overall timbre of each region vocals or instruments make them sound peaky and off in a way. Now the peak at 8k and in the air region does add to the overall sense of details and note crispiness. The Stellaris has a lot of note definition which makes it sound more technical, more detailed, more analytical if you will than pretty much every other planar out on the market right now. It has great overall technical performance, you can put it. Now the downside of it, however, is that it is not a natural sounding IEM at all, not close. You hear a lot of details, yes, notes are very crispy, yes, good head stage, yes, and all the little nuances you want, all yes, but everything sounds just like too bright metallic cold i think that's another good term to explain it it's just devoid of any naturalness whatsoever in any song that i play the only selling point for me when it comes to the stellaris is just again the details how well and how distinct it displays each notes the little nuances the micro nuances that comes with this im you get all of those front and center and you can hear them and it does have this wow factor effect. The first time you listen to this, you might just be like, wow, what are all these? The symbols are so crispy, clean. They're, they're so forward. They're coming right at me. All the little details of oh, the air, you know, like it has that kind of wowing sensation. But after a while, you realize that your music just sounds again, very unnatural and Peaky. Hence the term, love it or hate it, I am. You're either gonna love the heck out of this thing or just absolutely hate it. For myself, I would say, I guess I appreciate what it's trying to do and it does stand out from the other planar on the market. The details are arguably the best in the price range as well. But am I gonna listen to it every day or is it an easy recommendation for you guys? Uh, no, not really. Now you guys might be listening to this and be just as surprised as I am because this is an IEM from Moondrop and Moondrop is known for pretty much one thing that they do consistently well, tuning. They tune stuff really well, especially their newer items, their newer IEMs. Even their headphones like the Moondrop Void is arguably tuned pleasantly like it's easy to listen to good sounding it's not the type of tuning that you would expect from moondrop though i will say one thing i think moondrop maybe is just experimenting maybe you can stretch it like that maybe they're experimenting with you know getting things to sound more detailed and maybe in their second planar iam they will address the tuning issues that comes with this kind of signature while still retaining somewhat of a high level of details. If they can figure out that formula, it will sell really well. If they can keep a similar level of note definition that the Stellaris have, but make it so that the tuning is not the sacrifice, they're gonna have a really good product. So knowing Moondrop and knowing that they have a forward thinking philosophy, I think they're gonna improve on the Stellaris and release something more pleasant down the line that again hopefully retains the note definition and detail level that the Stellaris can deliver. But for now, we can only rely on our good old friend Mr. EQ. And no, you do not have to go and try EQ the Stellaris yourself. It's such a hassle. Why waste your time to do that? To save you guys some time and headache of EQing the Stellaris yourself, I actually already worked on an EQ preset for anyone to use. If you own the Stellaris, you can go to the description down below and download the EQ preset. Big special thanks to Paul Wasabi, a fellow reviewer for helping me fine tune 
this EQ settings to make it as perfect as it could. So check out his channel, link is down below as well. If you own this Stellaris, try out the EQ. I think it fixes the tuning significantly. Now it is not only listenable, but sounds pretty great while still keeping the level of details that the original Stellaris has. Now let's move on to rapid fire comparison. First, Stellaris versus S12. S12 has more bass than Stellaris. Stellaris has quite a lean mid bass, really clean cut separation. So the bass to the lower mid range on the Stellaris is actually really well executed. The S12 is more of a V shape ish kind of bass. So you have more mid bass, more thumps from the S12. The upper frequencies, upper mid range and treble area, the S12 is actually less bright and less forward than the Stellaris. That should tell you a lot because the S12 is deemed to be a really bright set. The Stellaris is just brighter. So yes, the S12 also has good soundstage and head stage, good levels of details, not as good as the Stellaris, but the S12 sounds much more natural and pleasing. Than Stellaris. Moving on, we have the Dunu Talos. Now, Talos is very relaxed, easy to listen to. Anyone can enjoy the Talos. In the bass area, the Stellaris has more bass than the Talos, but they're both are very clean cut when it comes to the bass and lower mid separation. The upper mid range on the Talos is much more even, less peaks, and also way more relaxing than on the Stellaris. The trouble area as well, the Talos does have some trouble and does have no definition, not on the same level of Stellaris again, but it doesn't distort the overall timbre of instruments as much as the Stellaris does. And with all of that being said, that is the end of this review today. Of course, I could have compared it to a lot of other planar sets like the Hook X, the Timeless, and the Station Wu, but the stories are gonna be mostly the same in the upper mid-range area and especially in the treble area. All those planar IMs are just not as detailed sounding as the Stellaris, but they're all more natural and much easier to listen to than the Stellaris. So I don't want to say the same thing five times in a row. So there you go. So in summary for 110, do I recommend the Stellaris? I would say it is in the middle. I can't recommend it for just regular music listening, especially if you're new to the hobby, this might just be too much for you. It might actually turn you off of listening to actual good, bright sounding IEMs in the future. So for that reason, I can't recommend the Stellaris. But if you already own a lot of IEMs, I guess, and you want something completely just different from what you have in your collection, if that's a mentality that you have, then yeah, Stellaris is maybe a good option, especially again, if you want to experience what good note definition or great note definition can sound like. Just keep in mind all the cons that I listed in this video if you're gonna buy the Stellaris. And with all that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Try the EQ if you do end up buying the Stellaris or if you already own the Stellaris. EQ again, it's in the description below. Try it out, give me your feedback. I'd love to hear from you guys. And oh, one more thing, Moondrop, if you're watching this, why not try the EQ as well? You know, maybe it'll give you some ideas of uh, a Stellaris V2 maybe. All right, that's it. I'll see you guys later. Peace out. Bye.